It's been a while since I've had any Luminar Neo videos on the channel and the reason for that is the software comes out later this month and the edition that I'm using today is the Early Access Edition. There is a few features disabled, it's just to give people a feel for the software. So today I decided to create this video because I couldn't get out to shoot today to create a video for the channel, I wanted another on location one. But hopefully you find this video today helpful in your editing. Now the image itself is nothing special, it's the panorama behind me, it's an 8 stitch panorama from a Mavic Pro. I just like the sky in it and I like the curves that complemented the sky with the, the fields in the foreground. There's a couple of mistakes in the actual image itself but it's a nice one to edit and it's a nice one to show you some of the features of Luminar Neo. So let's dive right in and look at the early access edition of Luminar Neo. That's quite hard to say actually. This is us now in Luminar Neo and it's the 5th of February and so this is the latest version of Luminar Neo, the latest update of it. And I just wanted to go through an edit from an older image. Now the processes and the steps I take is my choice with this. How you tackle an edit is entirely up to you. For example, I'm going to start with enhance, you may start with develop. So it's entirely up to you how you edit and you take from the videos what you think will work for you. So I'm going to go in, as I said, to enhance and I'm going to push that slightly and I'm what I'm watching for is that I don't blow out the sun too much. So I'm just going to do that. So the next thing is I'm going to play with the sky. I quite like the blue in it. It might be too much for me, but let's just go for it and see. We're only playing around with this just to see what it can do. And it's brought out some of these clouds and the depth in the clouds. One thing I would like to point out is a straight shot. This is not a bracketed image. So there might not be as much depth in it as I'm hoping when I get to this. So from the enhance, that's a global edit. I'm going to jump into structure, which I will probably turn down to certain areas of this. So I'm getting away with it there as well. So this is working out relatively quick for me as well. I'm going to get into details. Because it's coming from the drone image and because it's from the Mavic uh, Pro, there is going to be noise, especially at the time of night it was taken. Uh, so there's going to be noise in it. And if I zoom in here, you probably see the noise within this. But again, it's a large image. It's a really large image and I'm not too bothered about it. I like the image, so I'm not going to sacrifice the image because of the noise. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the small details here, not too much. And again, I'm going to zoom in here just to see how the small details are. Yep, I'm quite happy with that because if I push them too much, I'm going to over exaggerate that noise. So I'm going to take them back to a bit there. Denoise, where I'm going to work out with the denoise, because if I take the denoise too much, if I look at this area here and if I go in for the color denoise to start with, I don't want too much. I actually quite like the green in this. Just a subtle difference. Let's look at the luminosity denoise. That'll get away with as well. So I'm going to leave it at that again. Next, I'm going to go into the develop and I'm going to look at the exposure, the smart contrast and the highlights and the shadows. So this is me just basically building up the image. So the highlights, I reckon that if I pull them down, I will lose in the sky here and I do. So I'm just going to pull them back slightly. The shadows I'm going to lift slightly, but I don't want to push them too much because this is a golden hour shot, so I don't want to lose too much here. Smart contrast, perhaps just a touch. And we've got that there. Yep, quite happy with that. Exposure. Now I may bring this down slightly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in to this and look and see where the small tweaks are. Now there's not going to be much within this image, but already from the before and after, you can see there is quite a difference there. And I've got a nice bit of saturation going on as well. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to get into the landscape. As you would guess probably because it's the golden hour, I might as well use the golden hour slider. 
So let's just take that up slightly, just to see what it does to the image. There's not much left to do to this. I'm just going to adjust the colors and then I'm going to go in and adjust certain areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going into the hue, saturation and luminance. And for this, I'm going to get into the saturation and I'm going to play around with the blues. As I say, I feel that's just too much there. So I'm going to pull the saturation back and I understand it's an, a global edit. If I do that, look what happens, we'll lose quite a lot. So I'm just looking to pull this back slightly. Just to about there. I'm quite happy with it there. Now there's not much of a difference, but there's enough of, of a difference for me to be quite happy with that. As I said, that's a global edit, so it's affected the entire image. I don't want it to, I only want it to affect this area here. So I'm going to paint it into that area by choosing the mask. And I'm also going to be careful that I don't paint into too much of this. But for this video, I'll just do a sweep. So I'm just going to do that, there, back, and round. And that pulls that back for me. I quite like everything that's going on here. Just pull it back there. That blue there is fine. So we've still got the blue in this, the sea as well, the reflected colour into the sea as well. So again, quite happy if I want to pull it back further. As you can see, it only affects that part of the sky. But as you will notice, it starts having anomalies here because I'm working within a colour range here. So I'm going to pull that back just about there. Again, happy with this. Everything's going great as far as I'm concerned and we are nearly done. So I'm going to go back in now and enhance certain areas. Let's see. So let's go into structure. And we're going to push the structure slightly to about 10. Yep, I'm quite happy with that. So I'm only going to apply the structure to the foreground here. And I'll just do that like that, nice big sweep. So that's us got that there. I'm not being too particular with this. I'm just trying to apply it just to show you how it can go. So we've got that. So Again, quite happy. Enhance. I'm going to push the enhance just to see what it does. So that's me now. I've added the enhance twice and I actually quite like that. So I'm not even going to make that a, a local edit. I'm going to leave that as a global edit for this. We're actually nearly done and I'm actually quite happy with this image and using Luminar Neo to do it. So it lets me know that Luminar Neo can handle images like, like this to edit. And last but not least, I am going to go in to develop. I'm going to push the highlights slightly. Just a bit there. And the reason I'm going to push the highlights, I want to pick up on these areas here, just here, so that the sun's coming in and perhaps along there. Might, maybe not so much along there because that will draw our eyes away. So Let's see, the highlights are only at six. Let's just paint them in to see. I'm going to take the brush size down. Just around there. And I'm only working in the areas that there are highlights. I like the image as it is, so I'm going to leave it at that. Go back into Enhance. All I'm going to do is I'm going to push the accent just to about there. Now, if I turn that on and off, and you focus on the sky, you'll see the difference in the sky. Over the entire image, it looks good. That area there looks good as well, but it's the sky that I want to deal with at 29. So I'm just going to paint that into the sky. And mainly in this area. Just like that. I'm not even going to play in there, so I've put a local edit in there. I liked what was happening over here. So I'm going to play with it in there as well. Nothing going on here. I don't want to affect that. I don't want to keep being drawn over there. So let's just paint that there. I've still not touched the sun at all. Let's just check. Yep, just around these trees where the light's hitting it there. And that one there, that last one, hopefully, I'll take the size down again. Hopefully that last one there is 
help to create depth in this image because we're just accentuating the light that's there. That perhaps is maybe a wee bit too much. That's overpowering it, so we're getting drawn to that anyway. Let's go in here and just put a tiny bit down there and a tiny bit around there. So that's me, I'm quite happy with that one. When I went to export that image, it wouldn't allow me to export. Now, as you can see, this is the early access to Luminar Neo. And on this page, in the Skylum support page, it will tell you what it's limited to. Limited to. Now, it doesn't mention the export is limited. On my system, it is, however. So I just want to point that out. If you go in, if you have the early access version, and you cannot export. I'll go and search after this to see if there's a solution for it. But failing that, it did what I needed it to do. And also, it allows me to see how it's going to work with my images. So I'm quite happy with that. And they also mention on this page as well that you may lose your edits. Again, I'm not too bothered with that image because I quite happily go back in and re-edit it. It wasn't much that was done to it. So some of the features that are available in early release version of Luminar Neo. Uh, remove dust spots, relight AI, remove power lines and Luminar Share. Available in the main release, there's presets and layers. Now layers are what I am looking for. I've been editing for many, many years and I do a lot of compositing. I'll flash some up on the screen just now. And I really enjoy my composites. I use Luminar AI, Luminar Neo for my landscape images because there's certain features in there that I really, really like. But I enjoy my compositing. That just takes you away to another world for a few hours and I feel it does actually hone your skills when you are working with layers and also when it comes back to editing straightforward photographs. So I'm looking forward to layers just to see what it can do. Other things that are currently missing, it says histogram, dodge and burn tool. I did actually go and look for the histogram when I was doing that. I've done this after when it wouldn't export my image and I actually was looking for the histogram. Uh, so there might be a wee blip in the video. It was just to show you the, the histogram of the image. But I can see that that is missing from this. And to be honest, I'm totally cool with that as well. It also says on Windows, as I'm working in a Windows now, uh, disabled sliders and Sky AI, which I haven't used yet. Issues when using develop tools. Well, you saw I just used a few of the develop tools, didn't use too many. So therefore, I never came under any issues with it at all. Significant delays while using erase and fast forwarding in the history tab. Uh, not active plugins, i.e., from Lightroom and Photoshop and whatever plugins it's going to be available with. So again, once the full version comes out, all that will be available. Now there's always going to be small issues with new release software. There's always bugs with it. Uh, so I'm looking forward to when the full version is released. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully it lets you see just some of the things that you can do with it. Once the full edition is out, I'll be creating more videos with Luminar Neo and that'll be tutorials and composite videos as well. So I'm looking forward to trying the full working edition. Next week, we are up in Ullapool for four days of a photographic trip and I'm really looking forward to that. So probably more than likely there won't be a video on the channel next week. And if I get the chance, I'll actually film a video up there as well. But I want the content to be good and enjoyable for you to watch. So if I spend too much time taking photographs or just throwing in bits of a video, it won't work and it won't make good viewing. So we'll see. So the following week, perhaps there'll be a four day photographic adventure from Ullapool and the surrounding areas. Thanks again for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.